Macaroni in a pot, that's some wet ass stuff. Okay, it's on to my head. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm live. Anybody there? <laughs> hey, you guys, can y'all see me? I swear you hear that song one time, honey. Them fucking lyrics be in your head. Macaroni in a pot. That's some wet ass, wet ass, wet. That's the uncensored version because, you know, the, the, the regular version is just, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Hope you guys are doing good. All right, so y'all can see me. Hey! <laughs> I know it's been a few days, honey. Oh my gosh, this weekend was amazing. I've been kind of busy. I haven't been on social media like that. Um, one of my friends threw a birthday party. She's a Leo. So I went by there. It was just, you know, a few few folks in the Twin Cities. You know, we had a good time. Then the next day, my cousins threw me, you know, a little birthday party at my house. So that was nice because they weren't able to party with me on my birthday because everybody's schedules are so different and everything else. And my other cousin just finished college. She graduated with her pharmacy degree. So we were celebrating. So yes, honey, you know, Leo's, we celebrate all season long, honey. Okay. July Leo's will still celebrate their birthday in August. No shame. No shame. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we got a bunch of super chats. Um, we got about 900 people in here. So let me read these before the, the chat jumps up. Um, shout out to Lily I. She says, she sent $24.99. She says, hey, T, send in love from Denver, Colorado. Our state has been dealing with multiple fires within our mountains caused by bad air quality. Uh, praying the fires will be out soon. Thanks for all you do. Send in love out there to all the people. Hit that like button. Thank you so much, sis. The weather has been insane. I've been speaking on this for weeks. Okay. Right now, we are in Leo season. Leo is the fire sign. There has been crazy fires all over the world. Fires, explosion. Uh, what did I post yesterday on Instagram? And you know what's so funny? The person who sent me that story actually was Cardi. She was like, girl, you are not lying about all these crazy fires and everything going on. She was like, I've never heard of a fire NATO. I said, shit, me neither. Let me go ahead and post this and see if anybody's about everybody and see if anybody's ever heard of this. And if you guys don't know, um, over the weekend there was a huge tornado and there was also fires raging and it turned into a fire NATO. I was like, I've never seen nothing like that. The weather that's going on in this world is crazy. When it was cancer season, we dealt with all the water. Plus, you know, with all the air signs, with the whole C-19, now we're in fire season. I mean, there's a, a dang on bushfire going on in Kenya. It's been going on for days now. Um, this is one of the hottest seasons ever. You know what I mean? They said Death Valley. This is the hottest that Death Valley has been in 100 years. California, Arizona, they're dealing with extreme heat temperatures. So something is going on, honey. My tin hat is damn tingling, okay? Everything I've been saying these last few months have been coming to pass. And yes, climate change. Thank you, um, Shanasia. Climate change is very real. But it's just been a lot of stuff, a lot of strange weather phenomenons. I be seeing a lot of stuff in my dreams. It's very hard for me to sleep because my mind is always going. But I feel like, you know, there was a huge thunderstorm Friday. Um, it was really bad. Lots of lightning. Um, some trees were down in Minneapolis. Then I was watching the news yesterday and they said in Iowa, people are literally living in tent cities because apartments have been destroyed. Um, there were horrible, there was horrible flooding and thunderstorms and lightning in Iowa. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's just been crazy. And then people were hitting me up in Cali, like in the Bay area. They said it was a waterless thunderstorm. That it was just a bunch of crazy lightning going on in the sky. Put a teacup if you guys saw that in the Bay Area where there was just all this lightning, but there was no water, no rain. So I, I, I don't know what's going on in 2020, but that shit got me damn nervous. Because I'm like, if this is so bad right now with these fires, what is going to happen during hurricane season when it becomes official? Okay, so y'all seen that? Chicago had a tornado. Um... 
Somebody saying a heat storm in their city. Texas, most of, most of Southern California is on fire this time of year. China's weather machine. Oh, China's all fucked up. They got snow in China. I seen that yesterday on the damn international news. They had typhoons one day. Then the next day was a heat wave. Then they had snow. I'm like, what is going on? I, honey, yes, snow, honey. As we a, I probably mispronounced your name, but yes, snow in China. Y'all can Google it. So something is going on with this 2020. Like I keep telling y'all, stay vigilant and stay prayed up. Okay? It's crazy out here. Shout out to all 4,000 people. We've jumped up. A lot of folks are in the house. Yep, Dubai's on fire. Uh-huh. But like I told y'all before, China has that weather machine. And the weather machine in China is the size of, of the state of Texas. People thought I was crazy when I was telling y'all back in June, isn't it funny that the damn Indians keep getting hit with lightning strikes? Almost 200 and some Indians died from lightning. That's a rarity. To get struck by lightning is as rare as winning the lotto. So you mean to tell me in a month, 200 pe 250 people have been struck and killed by lightning in India. India's right, ni right next to China. China is beefing with India. I said, I bet you it goes back to their damn heart machine. And I showed y'all proof that they had a heart machine in China. And now China's experiencing all this crazy weather. Isn't it interesting that last month, Wuhan was flooded out? The place where the C virus started? Things that make you say, hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Bree. Breezy Deezy says, truth tell a T. Thank you, sis. Y'all know, I be, I be staying up on everything. I don't care. I keep around everything from hip hop to, to music to who's dating who to crazy weather, conspiracies. Honey, we can talk about anything on this channel because I'm multifaceted. I'm not a dumb bitch. <laughs> I feel good right now. Yeah, I'm happy to be back amongst friends. I missed you guys. You guys are my friends. You guys are my family. You guys are the only people I can get up here and talk to. I mean, some of y'all think I'm weird, but for I would say 95 percent of y'all, y'all understand where I'm coming from. And that makes me happy. OK. Let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Um, let's see. Aunt Will sends $20, says, love you, T, and I mean that. I love you, too, and thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming through. Um, let's see here. We got a lot of people. Uh, True Mick uh, from the U.K. says, you are definitely not lying about the fires. I'm from Birmingham, U.K., and we had a massive fire factory in Tysley. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. It is something going on in this world. God is trying to tell us something. You know what I'm saying? The ancestors, whatever you believe in. You know, a higher power, the, the spiritual deities. Hell, you can believe in Shango. Somebody's trying to tell us something. And we just, we gotta, we gotta wake up. Um, T.S. Ruby sends 999. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Draco and Kodak. <laughs> I like that. Says, looking good, T. Aw, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Johnny SS says, love you, T. Such great energy. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thanks for coming through. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Marvin D. What's up, Marvin? Says, hey, T. Sorry I missed the, the last live stream. I was spending time with my family. No worries. No, you don't need to apologize for that. These are the moments that we need to spend time with each other, with our families, and spend time with those who count. So thank you for coming through today, but don't worry about missing the last live stream. So thanks. Um, let's see here. What's up, Sketch? Fellow Leo. He says, hey, T, glad you back and doing your thing. Love the purple goddess. Thank you so much, Sketch. Appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Um... Leah M says, did you see LaToya Luckett's husband cheating on her while pregnant? Honey. Let me go ahead and grab my bottle real quick. Damn, this tea's still hot. Oh, shit. No, it's like legit hot. I just burnt my tongue. But yes, I did. Now, remember when it first came out, she was cussing folks out. Don't you talk about my husband. My husband ain't slinging peen everywhere. Then the receipts came out, and then all of a sudden it was, y'all keep me in prayer. I'm going through a lot, and then she unfollowed her husband. This is why I don't jock any celebrity relationships or any relationships, regular or celebrities. Because like I told y'all before, old man Williams might be with old lady Betty 
Been married 20 years, and old man Williams got a whole damn family up the damn street. Okay? So, again, she tried to go in on everybody, said everybody was hating. Y'all just wanted to destroy my marriage. It wasn't 24 hours later. She unfollowed her husband. I said, oh, Lord. But, you know, it's sad because she's pregnant. You know, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. But, again, like I said, with a lot of these celebrities and these men, they have money, fame, and options. And being faithful is just, you know, it's it's a hard thing to do. Hell, it's hard for the damn fry cook to stay faithful. They don't gave, they don't took him from fry cook to management. Oh, now he's, he want to fuck everybody in the restaurant because he got power. That fame, money, and power does things to people. Females, too. Don't get it twisted, okay? Went from frying fish to giving orders. <laughs> Be in the parking lot getting hit. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, Lord, it's a fire. <laughs> it is, honey, it is. Um, let's see here. Um, Shanae just says, oh, my effing God, you said my name and you said it right. Hey. <laughs> she says, love you, T, you're my favorite. Ain't never going to tell a lie. Thank you so much, sis, and thanks for coming through. Appreciate the super chat. Um, let's see here. Insert female username. Thank you for the 1999. Appreciate it. Um, Prime Logic says, "Tis the spirit of Leo. I love your energy. Today's my birthday. Despite the world literally catching on fire, I'm enjoying it. Thank you so much and happy birthday to you, fellow Leo. Shout out to all my Leos, honey. We're just sitting here watching all these damn fires sipping slow like, yeah, we try to tell you Leo season is that season, honey. <laughs> So anyways, y'all, we got 6,000 people in here watching. Shout out to all 6,000 of y'all. Thank y'all for joining me. So let's go ahead and, and get to talking about stuff, okay? So if you guys, I'm sure y'all know now, honey, it's trending number one on Twitter. Cardi B's WAP is number one. They made number one on the billboard, all over the music charts. Um, you, Like I said, everybody talks all that shit. Oh, this is, song is nasty. They're just talking about wet pee. You know what I'm saying? And it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but for somehow it's number one. So there was a lot of low-key WAP listeners out there that was low-key downloading it and twerking to it. Because the song is number one. And that's what I was telling y'all last week in my last stream. People complain all day, but they don't, their, their actions don't match the complaints. You had Ben Shapiro. Look at Barty Gang. We, we see the red shoes. Okay. I see the red shoes in there, Lisa. You had Ben Shapiro literally reading the lyrics last week. He was so disgusted. You had the Republican people, you know, different Republican senators and stuff like that saying things. You had a lot of people giving their opinion. And everybody's entitled to their opinion. You don't have to like the song. You know what I'm saying? But I just found it funny that people were so disgusted by it. But somehow it's number one. How? So again, people do not practice what they preach. Just like I told people last week, I said, remember when I told you I went to the nation of uh, Louis Farrakhan's Million Man March? Spent all that money. You hired a videographer, sound person, drug all that damn equipment to D.C. Filmed all that shit. Took me three days to edit it. And them videos, till this day, probably don't got no more than 5,000 views. But people claim they want positivity, they want to uplift the message, but nobody watches it when you give it to them. But when it be some grimy, you know what I'm saying, freaky shit, y'all like that shit. Somebody likes that shit. It's number one, okay? So congrats to Cardi. She got a number one. Congrats to Meg Thee Stallion and all the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I've only heard the song. I haven't even heard it on the radio. You know, I've really heard it like on Twitter when people like, you know, put the little clips in and stuff like that. Um... But yeah, some, somebody's, you know, listening to the song, you know what I mean? Because the song is number one now. So I just find the whole situation just very, very comical. You know, all the complaining, all that did was build controversy. And what does controversy do? It makes people like, well, damn, all this controversy. Well, let me go listen to this song. Is that not how NWA blew up? Remember, they wanted to ban F the police. That gave them so much coverage that it made people curious. Well, like, damn, well, let me go listen to the song. And I think that's what happened with WAP. Somebody said they can't play it on the radio. I wouldn't be surprised, honey. That's a nasty song. I told her that shit till she asked me. You know, we had a conversation the other day. 
And I was like, Cardi, now you know damn well that's a nasty song. She was like, yeah, you're right, T, you're right. It is nasty, but you know. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? That's the stuff that, that people vibe to. You know, until people change what, you know, if they feel like it's it's a bad look and they don't like that type of music, then you, you can't support it. But you can't complain, but then in the same breath, listen to it. You know what I mean? So, again, kudos to her, honey. She did her thing. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dreama Gordon. Thank you so much. She says, love you, T. I love you, too. Thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Del Rey since 1999 says, sending love, T. I'm going to leave Will. I'm going to leave Will. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave Will. <laughs> that never gets old to me, okay? Like, <laughs> y'all crack me up writing that in the thing. That never gets old to me. Um, let's see here. Um, Melissa Lewis says, there is a narrative that needs to be pushed. It's not all people. It's the people who own YouTube. They put out what they want you to see. Um, I, I agree. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Jason says, been watching you for years. You remind me of my sister. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jelly Bean says, I'm a little late, but I'm here looking beautiful as usual. Hope you've been feeling good and being extra safe. Much love from Louisiana. Thank you, baby. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for checking in on me. I appreciate that. So today, um, if you guys don't know, Cardi did an interview with Joe Biden. Okay, so this is kind of going viral right now. And she talked to Joe Biden about a lot of like real stuff, you know, just issues that she feels is going on in the community. They talked about, you know, possible, you know, free education, um, Medicare and things like that for people. So she said a lot of real things. Um, this isn't a political channel, though. You know what I'm saying? This ain't my I don't know what to think right now about the people who are left. You know, I'm still doing my research on everything. I'm no fan of the the current man in office, but I don't know. I don't know. 2020 is a really disturbing year. I don't know. I don't know what to think about our politics right now, the people running. I don't know what to feel one way or another. It's just very disturbing. Like, it's hard to think about who's going to be running our country for the next four years and how it's going to be affecting us literally so let me go ahead and play this clip here give me just a second to get all this stuff set up make sure i have the right clip of her interview with mr biden here let's see make sure y'all can see that okay so i'm just gonna play a small snippet here in terms of this election I have a whole list of things that I want and I wish and I desire uh, for our next president to do for us. But first thing first, let me keep it a buck. I just want Trump out. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like his mouth gets us in trouble so much. I don't want to be, be lied to. I don't, I don't want that, like, you know, we're dealing with a pandemic right now, right? And I just want answers. I want to know when this is over. Like, you know, I want to go back to my job. I want to I want to be able to go outside. I want to be able not to feel like I'm trapped in my home. And But I don't want somebody to lie to me and tell me that it's okay to go outside. It's okay not to wear a mask. That everything is going to be okay. No, I want like a, a timeline of when things are going to get better. I, I want a president to tell me what are the steps for us to get better besides, um, you know, uh, taking pre uh, precautions like with our masks and quarantining. I need somebody to tell me like, this is gonna be over when we find this cure. This is why it's taking so long. This is why other countries are doing better than ours when it comes to this pandemic. I need somebody to tell me the truth, the hardcore truth and also, I, of course, want free Medicare. And this is why it's important to have free Medicare, because look, look, look what's happening right now. You see why we should have been having free Medicare for a long time. I, of course, think that we need a uh, free college education. That's second. And I want Black people to stop getting killed. And no justice for it. I'm tired of it. 
I'm tired of it. I just want more stricter laws that is fair to black citizens. And you know, it's fair for cops too. If you kill somebody that is that doesn't have a weapon on them, you go to jail. You know what? If I kill somebody, I got to go to jail. You got to go to jail too. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that damn, I don't know how she does them little sounds, honey. That had me cracking up. I was just like, okay. So this is my thing. Cardi has always been into politics. She can have a conversation with you all day. She's just always been into, like, things like that. Uh, she interviewed Barney, Bernie Sanders not too long ago and things like that. My thing is, I don't want it to be a situation where these candidates are just pandering. Because she does have a huge fan base. She has a huge influence. You know what I'm saying? She's number one right now. I really want it to be about a way to help the American people. Don't just pander. So, you know, the number one artist really come with a, a, a real solid agenda, you know, and I think she made a lot of really good points about, you know, getting tired of black people getting killed by the police and wanting, you know, the police officers who commit crimes to be arrested for their crimes, just like if it was a regular citizen, you know, what I'm saying killing somebody, they'd be in jail um, the whole Medicare, you know, wanting people to be able to get some type of health insurance, especially with everything that's going on right now with C-19. So I think she made a lot of good points. But like I said, me just seeing through a, the, the nonsense, I just noticed like sometimes the way like the Democratic Party moves, it's like, it, it's, I don't know, it, it always just seems like there's an ulterior motive or ulterior agenda. Just like when Hillary Clinton went on to the breakfast club and was pulling hot sauce at her, out, her por out her purse. And, you know, I got hot sauce in my bag, swag. Bitch, what are the policies? You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to hear about your bitch. I don't walk around with hot sauce in my bag and I'm black. Like, that's the stuff that just kind of annoys me. Don't just pander. Like, we understand. Like, talk to us like regular people. Like, if you were on CNN or MSNBC or you were talking to a white audience, you wouldn't be trying to do a two-step and pull hot sauce out your bag. So that that's the stuff that that I want. You know, I want something of substance. Like, don't, don't bullshit me. Just like, you know, every time they go onto a black platform, just like when Wolf Blitzer was trying to, you know, two-step and shimmy. Everything doesn't have to be a song and dance. Like, you know, there are black people who are educated. We understand big words. You don't have to try and talk and, you know, abonics and all this goofy shit. Just be yourself and just really tell us what you plan on doing to help the black community, okay? You know, so I, I don't know. That's just how I feel. I don't, I don't, I don't like feeling pandered to. You know, and it's just like have a real open dialogue. Really talk to us like you would any other group of people. Because like I said, when they go and talk to the Latinos, they're not pulling out motherfucking uh, Cholua sauce and, you know, Verde sauce and Chipotle peppers out their purse. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want some tacos or some shit. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I've never seen that happen. So that's what I'm saying. Like, treat the black community with the same respect. So I thought it was a good move for her to, you know, interview him and, um, you know, just like she did Bernie Sanders. But again, I just don't want it to be where they're just doing this to pander. You know, really come through with the policies that people, not just her, but people who are really in it, um, who really speak for like the Democratic Party or for those particular constituents really come up with a plan to help the community. Don't just pander. So that's what I would say about that. Let's see here. <laughs> Look, I, <laughs> jalapenos and avocado. <laughs> I'm just, I don't see it when they go to other communities. They just sit there, you know, quietly and, you know, talk and they're very professional. But when it comes to like coming on the black platforms, it's all these, two, you know, they, it's like they want to start breakdancing or some shit. No, just be yourself. You ain't got to do all that. Pull hot sauce out your damn black. Shit's weird. Oh, uh, let me see here. Uh, so Unique, like me, says, good afternoon, T. I may have to catch the playback, but I wanted to send some love. Thank you so much for the super chat. And thank you for coming through. I appreciate that. Um, Megan Frederick says, Benden's mouth is just as toxic as Trump. 
And a new president is not about to make the pandemic go away. Thank you so much for the super chat and thanks for coming through, sis. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Insert. Oh, female name says I sent 20, but I forgot to add my comment. You're perfect. I love you. Your spirit is all the fruits of the spirit. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming through and thank you for the two super chats. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Elza Max says, love you, T. You are my truther channel these days. Thanks for keeping it balanced and wise and real. Appreciate you, Elza. Thank you for coming through. Um, Brie from NYC. What's up, sis? She says, sending much love, T. As always, today's my birthday. Thank you for going live, which, ain't, which made my day even better. Keep preaching the truth, sis. Thank you and happy birthday, Brie from NYC, fellow Leo. Thank you so much for coming through, and I hope you enjoy your day. Um, let's see here. Um, Beauty and the Brit says, TT, I love your lives. You're my favorite YouTuber. You all speak the truth, and it's entertaining as well. I'm going to always watch you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, okay, so we talked about that. Um, so now there was some controversy surrounding WAP with Little Kim. So Little Kim is back with her baby's father, Mr. Papers. And I guess he's a rapper, too. I've never listened to his music a day in my life. But, you know, it is what it is. So on top of them coming out and saying that they're going to start OnlyFans, <laughs> didn't I tell y'all? I told y'all, you know, these celebrities, that money is slowing down. Everybody's starting to OnlyFans, a podcast, a YouTube channel. I'm not mad. Do what you got to do. I'm, not, I'm never going to tell people that they're not allowed to get their bag and, you know, make money and, and things like that. But I just think, like I told y'all, this C-19 situation has humbled a lot of people. And if your ass was arrogant and stunting and bragging and being nasty before the Rona, you think I'm about to support anything you do? Not, you know, oh, everybody come join my OnlyFans. No, bitch, you go sell all them damn bags you was bragging about, all them damn dicks that you came was paying your bills. You go ask them for some damn money. I'm not paying to see your OnlyFans for you to post the same crap that you post on Instagram. Now, if it was somebody who was humble and cool and, you know, it's just like, hell, I can't do any concerts, I can't make any music, then I don't, I don't mind supporting them. I don't mind, you know, supporting their Patreon or supporting, you know, their, their YouTube and stuff like that. But it's a lot of these celebrities, you know, that bragging shit done came back to bite a lot of y'all in the ass. And I don't feel bad. That's why you always be humble, okay? Because the same ones that you were shitting on and saying, you know, I got this, I'm here, and y'all's down here, it was those regular people, those regular nine to five people who put you in your position, okay? Now they're begging. Now there's all types of celebrity welfare programs for the music and, and everything else, honey, okay? So now they're, they're trying to start an OnlyFans. I don't know what they're going to be doing on that. I don't know if they're going to be rapping or cooking. I, I don't know. If they're going to be shaking their ass, who knows? But, um, well, <laughs> listen, somebody said straight facts, lovely. Y'all not keep that shit real, honey. I, there was a lot of people bragging before the Rona. All oh, people done got humbled. People's boutiques done shut down and everything else, you know, because it, it's, it, you know, it affected everybody. And it seemed like people's mentality at first when the C-19 happened, remember, they were cocky. Y'all need to just stay home. Stay home. We're trying to get back to work. They kept yelling at regular folks. And regular folks were like, well, I don't have the comfort of staying in a big 10-bedroom home, you know, where you can stay in, in, in this wing and not be bored and go to that wing and not be bored. Like, I actually had to pay bills. So, no, I want to go to work. And they was like, you know, won't y'all just stay? I'm mean, be on Instagram going off in Atlanta. A lot of the Atlanta celebrities, won't y'all just stay the fuck home so we can all get out eventually? But you realize that the people who were still out and about, they weren't necessarily out there to go club, and they were trying to work and pay their bills. And now, you know, they're all stuck at home and having to find, you know, ways to re reinvent themselves and get money. So, like I said, they're all doing that. And let me see here. We're going to go ahead and um, you post your shit again, you're going to get blocked. That was a warning. I don't play them games because I don't go to nobody else's channel panhandling. So stop. So anyways, on top of her talking, y'all already know, on top of her talking about starting her OnlyFans, 
Fat Joe, who is now turned into, I guess, a podcaster. He Does he still make music? I don't know. But he's a podcaster now, okay? So he's doing all these interviews with all types of celebrities. You know, I mean, these celebrities have basically taken over the Breakfast Club's job, um, Revolt TV's job. They've now just started their own interview sessions on um, Instagram. So he ends up interviewing Little Kim about WAP. He says, you know, what do you think about, you know, the new song WAP? And Little Kim's energy was kind of interesting. It was very dry, you know. It, I expected a lot more sauce. I didn't get that. So I want to go ahead and play that for y'all. <laughs> y'all are screaming. <laughs> you know, I'll play that panhandling shit. Don't come on my damn uh, live uh, throwing up your super chat and, all, you know, all types of links. I see that you're going to get, uh, your shit going to be hitting. You do it again, you're going to be blocked, period. Like I tell you, I work hard for my fan base. I work hard. I put in work. You're not about to just eat off my shit, bitch. Absolutely not. Um, so let me go. <laughs> Y'all know I'm a mess, honey. Let me go ahead and play this for you guys. And just watch little Kim's disposition and watch how her husband, like their disposition is just so dry. Y'all just watch this. <laughs> These comments be cracking me up. <laughs> y'all are messy. <laughs> all right, y'all watch you know, this. You've seen uh, uh, Cardi and, and Meg do this song, and they got attacked for, like, doing this song. Like, what, what do you feel like? You've been, you've been making music like this your whole life. Like, so what do you think about it? It is what it is. So what? You know? Make your, make your music talk your shit. Yeah, make your music talk your shit. Yeah, because I feel like I feel like it's always so hard, right? Like they make it so hard for females to get along or when a female do some shit. Like me and Papers, we rap about shit all the time. It's foul as shit. There yeah. ain't nobody talking about that. But when right. a female... Mm -hmm. A female do some shit is a problem. Yeah. Right. Right. And all we doing is representing for the females. That's it. I don't. I don't understand. Like, you know, we representing. So it's like I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I've always felt like this is my personal opinion. You ain't got a co-sign it or nothing, but I always felt like you the blueprint. Um, you the DNA for it. Um. How, do you feel like you get your flowers? Do you feel like they give you your props? No, that's okay. No, no, I don't. But it's okay because I don't want no flowers. I want some money. I want a check. I want fucking deposit, cash on demand, COD. That's what I want. Right. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There should be there should be a little kid like series like like. Yeah, you know what I don't like though. I don't like when like when people got want to steal from me or do something for me that's when they give me my props and then you know they don't really want to come behind the scenes and show the love the, you know i like like i i love love especially amongst the females like i love when we could hang out me mary missy like or we used to drive to the beach together and chill on the fourth of july like we used to like hang out we used to listen we go to the studio just to hang out and then it's like yo I think I got something for that. Just jump on it. It's not, it's never planned. It's just, it should just be love. It should be like, yo, we rolling, you know? Yeah, I think, I think you're. All right, we're done. That's enough. Bye. <laughs> okay, so how do y'all feel about that? Okay, so we're going we gonna to take a poll real quick. And I don't know, I assumed it's her husband because they've been, Acting like husband and wife. And I heard rumors that they low-key got married. He got on the gram the other day and said that if she cheats on him, he's going to kill her. She thought it was cute. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm assuming they're married. I don't know, honey. Because, yeah. Anyways. Put a teacup if y'all feel like her response was kind of lackluster and shady. I want to see what y'all think about that. Why well, y'all yeah, dumb read this super chat? Crystal Norfleet says, especially all those loving hip hop stars are really doing OnlyFans now. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. And yes, I agree. I agree. A lot of them are. Okay, so I see a lot of teacups. 
So a lot of people felt kind of felt the same way that it kind of came off a bit shady, very dry. I felt like Fat Joe had to do a lot of talking. It was almost like, what do you think about this? And it was just like this one word was, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like Fat Joe kept having to like just kind of talk like, well, do you think this? Or I believe that what it's like after a while. Well, Fat Joe, why don't you just interview yourself? Because <laughs> it's like she was just not going. He was trying to pull it out of her. And she just. Uh, uh. <laughs> she was so not into it. So, I OK, so let me be fair. I, I, I asked everybody on Instagram as well. so And that's why I, I post questions like that on Instagram because I like to get other people's points of views, you know, because I see things a certain way. Y'all might see them differently. And so I know a lot of little Kim fans were saying, no, it wasn't shade. I, they just feel like she's tired. She's tired of constantly having to talk about, you know, the whole female sexualization. You know, she's over it. And then she's also upset about her not really receiving her flowers. So a lot of people are saying that they feel like, you know, she's kind of jaded. Um, other people are saying she's just mad because she wasn't invited to be in the WAP video. You know, Little Kim did pave the way. That's why I didn't understand so much of the backlash. As if Little Kim wasn't saying all types of gutter ball shit when we were growing up. Little Kim and the sexualization of female hip hop that she ushered in is what created a Cardi B. It's what created a Nicki Minaj. It's what created a Meg Thee Stallion. Those are little Kim's babies, okay? They're young enough to be her damn daughter. So let's keep that real. So I just felt like being that she's the one who ushered in this type of, of rap, you know, the, the hypersexualization of female rapper. Because remember before then, it was Queen Latifah, MC Light, um... You know, they dress more masculine, more B-boy style. They kind of dress like the dudes. And they had, I remember, uh, what's that song? You and I, T-Y. You and I, T-Y. That's a unity by Queen Latifah. That was like a really dope song. You know, that was like a very positive female empowerment song. And that was the difference between when we were growing up versus now. You had positive music like that that uplifted females and said you don't have to show all your goods. You don't have to allow a man to just smack you on the ass. You know what I'm saying? There was one line when the dude from I'm Naughty by Nature, um, you know, KG, no, was it K? No, it was Tommy. He had smacked on the ass and Queen Latifah was like, I hot off and I punched him in the eye. You know what I mean? Like there was a mixture of all that stuff. Who you calling a bitch? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Maddox. Yes, that was the part. Who you calling a bitch and she punched him in the eye? So it was like we had a mixture, salt and pepper. So you had, you know, the little Kims. You had the Foxy Browns. You had the ones who talked more about sex. But then you also had the ones who talked about more positive, quote-unquote, respectable female rap. There was a variety. Whereas nowadays, that variety is not there. It's like everything is more sexual. Everything is about how tight it is, how wet it is, uh, you know, how to, how to use this to go get a bag from a guy. You know, it, it, that's just what it is in most of this music. You know, let's have a threesome. It's just there's no balance, you know. Or, I mean, let me not say there's not a balance because you have rappers like Chica and Rhapsody but they don't get mainstream success, what I'm trying to say. There's no balance in the mainstream. In the mainstream, when we were growing up, there was mainstream success for Queen Latifah, MC Light, you know, um, females who rap like that. Just like there was mainstream success for females like Little Kim and Foxy Brown. But nowadays, there is no... There's no mainstream success for a lot of those female rappers. You know, it's not really even. So I, I would have appreciated it if Little Kim would have added a bit more sauce to that rib, okay? That was a dry-ass rib bone, Little Kim. I needed you to dip it in some barbecue sauce. And let's really get down to the nitty-gritty of, you know, of the hypocrisy of how society wants to attack them as if you didn't pave the blueprint. And I get her for feeling some type of way because she feels like she doesn't get the flowers that she deserves or the roses and things like that. And I can get that because so many people have not even borrowed, literally stole her whole persona, honey. Lyrics, wigs, whole outfits, whole style. They literally mimic themselves off a of little Kim. And then, you know, she feels like they didn't really pay the, you know, homage to her like she deserves. You know, and I get that. But after a while, you just got to move on. You know what I'm saying? How long are we going to hold on to this? 
At the end of the day, she's an icon in her own right. But I, I wish she would have spoke more. I wish she would have spoke more. Let me see here. Um, Deanna Spiro Roberson says, I hope people not taking medical advice from Summer Walker, talking about what people what people should feed their kids. Oh, I don't know what's <laughs> I don't know what Summer Walker told y'all to feed y'all's children. I don't know. But thank you for the super chat. Uh, Cindy Canales says, hey, T, thank God you went live. You're keeping me awake. I've been driving for six hours. Two more to go. Thank you for always keeping it real. You are so welcome, and thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Katie and Wright sends 49 send a $49.99 sticker. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Corey Tate says, she was cool with the girl at her level or before her she's the blueprint for that diva attitude <laughs> and you know what sometimes that's what it is you know when people are first starting out and they're getting a little buzz then it's like okay well i can be cool and you know show some love take a picture but then as people start to elevate folks feel some type of way so that i mean it could be a case of that as well you know but I, one thing i will say about cardi is that she has always paid homage to like the Remy Ma's, the little Kim, and she has always tried to connect with different female artists. So I will give her props on that because the female rap game has been so divisive for so long. So that one thing, so the fact that she had all those women in the Watt video was refreshing to see so many women in one video. You know, could it have been nice to see all those same women talking about a more empowering song? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But again... That's what gets the most hits nowadays is the more overly sexual, vulgar lyrics. That's what's going to go number one nowadays. So I don't know. I just found her response just very lackluster. Um, I don't necessarily think that she was throwing shade at Cardi and Megan. I just think she's over it. And she feels like I'm little Kim. There's so much I have going on in my life. I'm working on music. Why do we have to talk about these little young girls? That's the kind of vibe I kind of get. It wasn't so much hate. It's just that, you know, I'm not trying to talk about them. I don't care, you know? Um, let's see here. Valadina says, Uncle Luke paved the way for her, and he doesn't get his props. Yep, you're so right. And I talked about that last week, that, you know, hate him or love him. If it was not for Uncle Luke taking his quest to the Supreme Court for freedom of speech, a lot of y'all wouldn't have no career. Uncle Luke paved the way for people to be able to say what the hell they want to say on wax today. Because, again, freedom of speech goes both ways. You can say that I'm free to say this, but then if I talk about this, I'm not allowed to. So he's the one who paved the way for people to be, to be able to make the music the way that they want to make it. And he does not get props for that. So I definitely agree with you 100%. Um, Shannon G says, T, you are absolutely correct as usual. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate the super chat. Um, let's see here. Melanin Queen, what's up, sis? She says, these male rappers want female rappers to be ladies on the mic, but be the same ones that will smash them and talk about it on a track. Misogynistic and ridiculous. Love you, T. I sent you an email a few days ago. Okay, I'm going to have to go ahead and look for that. Thank you so much. And I agree with you. You know, it's like... It's funny that a lot of these women, um, you know, a lot of male rappers had so much to say about that song. And it's like the stuff that they rap about is no better. So it's cool for you to talk about effing these women and, you know, making them do this and then tossing them to the side like garbage and moving on to the next bad bitch. But then when the women basically say the same thing, it's an issue. But again, that's that's hip hop for you. It's always been that 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 hypocritical aspect. You know, I remember what's the girl that came out, the lesbian lady, um, young young M A. Remember when she came out? You know, she was talking some hardcore stuff, talking about killing and shooting and everything else. And then what was his name, Boyce Watkins or whatever? He came out trying to come for her. Oh, you shouldn't rap like this. This this is is this what these young ladies are rapping about right now? Well, where was this energy when Lil Wayne and, you know, all these, insert any rapper's name here, was talking about killing other black men? You know, I'm not saying that it's good or bad, but if we're going to talk about it, we need to have an honest discussion. Don't just get up in your feelings when it's women saying the same thing that these men have been saying for a long time. 
Remember, like I said last week, um, songs like it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. But then when a woman says, you know, I fuck this nigga, get some money and move on to the next, it's an issue. But we were raised on music where it was talking about having you and your homies run a bunch of trains on females. So it's a lot of mess. It's a lot of mess all the way around. April Thomas says, I'm late. Hugs, T. Hugs to you. Thank you. Um, and Kodak Black said he wants to sleep with Young M.A. Kodak Black is a weirdo. He was just trolling that woman for attention. He knows damn well Young M.A. don't want no damn dick. Not from damn Kodak anyways. Nasty self. So, yeah, so that was my whole thing. It's just like the energy is always so different when it's women versus men. So, yeah, you're right, sis. There's definitely a lot of misogyny in that. Um, oh, somebody says... Boyce Watkins doesn't pay his employees. Oh, oh, then then somebody. Uh, d- oh, he, he did he delete his comment. Y'all are messy, honey. I don't watch Boyce. I don't know what he does with his staff. I've heard stuff, but I don't I don't watch him. That's a mess, though. Got to pay your peoples. You know what I'm saying? Got to pay your peoples. Uh, Melissa Brown said nine ninety nine. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Vic says. Uh, back at it with the love from Canada. I don't know if you remember, but I told you a while ago that you raised my spirits when my parents couldn't do the job. Well, I moved this weekend and I can breathe now that I'm out of that toxic house. Wow. Thank you so much for the super chat. And I'm glad that you got out of that situation. You know, there's nothing worse when the toxicity is coming from your own household, from your own parents. Trust me. I know how that is. I left my home when I was 18. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. It was just too much, too much negativity, too much just bad stuff going around, you know. So I'm glad you were able to get out that environment. You know, one thing about a home, a home should be your safe haven. It should be a place where you get to come home, you know what I'm saying, leave the weight and the stress of the world at the door, pull off your damn wig, <laughs> take off your shoes, pull off your bra, let your titties hang. You know what I'm saying? You should be able to just, you know, come home and be free. Don't nobody got time to come into a home full of toxicity. And I don't care if it's your parents, if it's a husband or a wife. If that toxicity is just getting so bad that it's making you just depressed and crazy, you got to break yourself from that situation. So kudos to you for doing that. And thank you for joining me today. Oh, my God. Did I get kicked off my stream? Oh, hell no. I'm going to keep recording. I'm going to keep recording. Hopefully it comes back up. Okay. It's resuming. It's resuming. Can you guys hear me? Okay. It's resuming. YouTube is bugging. They kicked me off the stream, but I'm, I think I'm back. Now it's in the red. Oh, wow. Hold on. Hold on. Let me try and hit refresh. Come on, YouTube. This is ridiculous. It kicked everybody out of the stream. See, when you talk real shit, here comes YouTube to just act the fool. Can y'all see and hear me? It's like totally in the red. Okay. It keeps saying that I'm offline. Can y'all see? Y'all can see and hear me? Okay, it's really, really low all of a sudden. It's turned red. I don't know. I can keep going because I'm recording on my OBS and I can just upload. Um, I can upload the recording for my OBS. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. It has over like 10,000 people in here. But it's like in the red right now. And it keeps going offline. Like this is insane. It keeps going offline. Okay, you guys can still hear me? Okay, as long as you guys can hear me, I'm going to hit refresh again. As long as y'all can hear me, I'm just going to keep going. And when it decides to connect, it just connects. So I'm still recording on my OBS. So as long as y'all can hear me, we're good. So let me go ahead. How much time do I have? I've been on here for 15. Damn, already 15 minutes. So I've already been on here almost an hour. Let me get to the... Summer Walker T. Give me just a second here. Because we talked about that. Okay, so 
Y'all remember the lady from Philly, Jaguar, right? So she's still been on her, like, Instagram page going in. She called Erica Badu a witch, <laughs> said she's casting spells and blocking her bag. Um, she's been going off. So she also basically insinuated that Summer Walker may have been touched by people in the industry, and Summer Walker went off. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys um, the clip of Summer Walker. No, excuse me, of um, Jag talking about the Summer Walker situation. So give me just a second to pull this up here. I don't understand why the stream is bugging. This is crazy. Let's see here. Let me check something. Okay. Oh. Looks like for the most part everybody can see. God, this is crazy. Everybody can see. Hold on. I'm like trying to refresh the page one more time. Okay. Okay, now I'm back in the yellow. Okay, so it's back in the yellow, so I think it's back. Okay, so everybody's saying it's working now? Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. So it looks like I'm back now. So let me play this video of, of um, Jaguar Wright talking about Summer Walker, okay? I apologize for the technical stuff, but it is not my fault. This is all YouTube. So give me a second to get this set up real quick here. Oh, where's my display? Okay, y'all listen to this. My advice to any female who wants to get into this business, have a thick skin, do not drink alcohol, never get high in front of anybody, keep somebody close to you that you know at all times, summer. Has anybody bothered to ask why she all of a sudden became claustrophobic and couldn't perform anymore because she had anxiety? Yeah, she got anxiety. Somebody touched her. I don't know it for a fact, but I seen it in a, I heard it in, I know, I know the sound. I can look in a woman's eyes and tell when she's been touched. She don't trust none of the people that she around, so she just gonna stay off the road, you see. Now, for every name that I can tell you that you know, I can give you about 55 to 1 of all the ones that didn't make it but got the stories. See, those are the ones those are the worst ones. Okay, so this is what Summer Walker had to say about the situation. So Summer Walker says, one, I ain't never been touched. I'm a child of God. I'm highly protected and highly favored. Honey, ain't nothing ever happened to me. Fortunately, I've been beyond blessed enough to never have to experience no shit like that. Two, a mother effer would... Definitely get clapped and knocked off. Anyone who actually knows me knows that. Then she says, three, I'm, highly, I'm a highly intelligent introvert and prefer not to interact with people because a lot of mo mo mother effers are thrown off. Like you, you're a prime example of why I don't have time. Four, you're weird as fuck. You don't, you don't make something up as serious as the R word about someone that you don't even know. Then try to blast someone about it. I need you to be more productive with your time and platform. I don't know you, but you, but I expect more from you. You're a woman, a fellow black woman at that. Like, what type of time are you on? For some clout, child, bless your spirit, I'm going to pray for you today. <laughs> Honey, Summer Walker was not here for the foolishness, okay? And honestly, I don't blame her. It looks like the stream is back in the green, so we're, we're good now. Um, I don't blame her at all. I think when you're saying things like that, it's not okay. You can't just throw shit out there and, and don't have no proof. And I feel like at this point, especially now that she's doing interviews, Jag is starting to look a little clout chasing, you know, like little clout chaser-ish to me, okay? It went from I'm just trying to help folks to now you're doing whole interviews. But my thing is this. 
I don't think it's fair. Like, even if she suspected that, that is Summer Walker's story to tell. Okay? You can't just go around just saying anything about anybody. And especially when you're saying, well, I have no proof. I don't know if it happened. But in my heart of hearts, it had to happen. That doesn't make any sense to me. You can't just say that, you know, you just feel something happened, but you have no proof. So I'm glad that Summer stuck up for herself and said what she had to say. You know, at this point, um, it's looking like Jag is doing a bit much. And she's starting to come off as, you know, I understood that initial video. She was angry. She was getting stuff off her chest. But since that video that I did, she's done so many live streams just blasting people, putting everybody's business out there. And then to attach people to this whole mess that you've never even met before, that you don't know, I think that at that point, that's really dangerous. That's a, that's a dangerous narrative to spin. So I'm glad Summer Walker said something. Um, let me see here. Um, CJ Family Show says, Hey, T, I sent you a friend request on Instagram. Uh, we love you also. We live in Illinois. We are out of light for a day. Thank you so much, CJ. Thank you for the super chat. Um, I heard a lot of people are out of like light just due to the thunderstorms and power being knocked. So a lot of people are being affected. So thank you for coming through. Um, YouTube is kicking everybody out again. Okay, I've been on here for an hour. Let's see here. And so it might just be time for me to get off. I've been on here already an hour. YouTube is tripping. Like it went from like 4,000 people down to zero. Like they just keep. Kicking people out. Let me see one more. Let me see what else I had to talk about. So we hit on the Summer Walker thing. Oh, then I just wanted to talk about real quick. Um, it was announced today that Jam Master J's killers were found. Now, that whole situation with Jam Master J to me is very, very interesting. Because it's been like a whole, I think it's been like 18 years since his death. And now it's come out that it was all behind a drug deal. That Jam Master J was moving weight. And this was some type of drug deal gone wrong. Um, so let me go ahead and find the article here that was just posted today. Let me see here. Because it was like two articles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read this here. So it says a federal grand jury has indicted two men in the long unsolved murder of Jam Master J the pioneering DJ of Run DMC, who was killed in 2002, prosecutors said on Monday. Jam Master J, born Jason Mizell, was fatally shot at a recording studio um, in the Queens neighborhood of Jamaica when he was 37. Nearly 18 years later, U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York unsealed a criminal indictment alleging that Carl Jordan Jr. and Ronald Washington conspired to kill Jam Master J in retaliation for a drug dispute. The indictment alleges that Jam Master J was involved in transporting kilograms quantities of cocaine between 1996 and 2002 alongside his music career. In July 2002, he acquired about 10 kilograms of cocaine, which was intended to be distributed by, Was by Washington, Jordan, and others. The indictment states, but a dispute between Washington and co-conspirer led Jam Master J to tell Washington that he'd be out that he would be out of the cut. That he would be out of cut. I don't know. The, the way they wrote it is weird. He'd be cut out of the transaction. The indictment states Washington and Jordan then conspired to kill him. The indictment also states on October 30th, they entered Jam Master J's recording studio with firearms. And Jordan fatally shot Mizell in the head and shot another man in the leg, according to the indictment. Jordan, 36, was arrested Sunday and will be arraigned Monday afternoon via teleconference. And Washington, 56, is in federal custody and will be arranged at a later date, prosecutors said. So, this is very, very interesting. I always felt like there was more to the story with Jam Master Jane. And the fact that not only was he killed, but the other witness was shot in the leg. 
You had to know somebody in that studio. It's not like you just knock on the door and walk in. They had to buzz that person in. So I always felt that it was people that he knew who killed him, that he recognized, that were, you know, able to be buzzed in. Um, and remember when I talked about it a long time ago? Well, not even a long time ago, honey. This was just somebody said, oh, shit. Wait, hold up. Somebody sent five dollars. Deborah Mitchell says, I'm side eyeing Reverend Run. Oh, why are you blaming Reverend Run? You think he has something to do with the setup? Oh, y'all are messy. But remember when I was telling you guys, when I was talking about the Juice World situation, and I was telling y'all, Juice World was a drug mule. And y'all thought I was reaching. I said, he didn't get caught with like a fucking, you know, with a QP. He had pounds of marijuana on that plane. There was somebody else who got caught with the same amount of, what was it, like 300 pounds of marijuana? Y'all can write it in the thing. But it was, a, it was somebody else. They weren't famous. They got caught with like 100 to 200 pounds of marijuana in their car in North Carolina. And street value would equal like over a million dollars. Juice World had about that much on his private plane. And remember, I was telling y'all, and Lil Wayne too. Remember, I also talked about Lil Wayne. And Lil Wayne is still, he's still facing charges for that. That's why he's trying to podcast and shit, because he got to pay them legal fees coming up. That's a whole nother video. Like I was telling y'all in that Juice World video, that a lot of these celebrities are low-key drug mules. Think about it. They have access to... To go anywhere worldwide, they have the fame, they have the great cover. You're not going to think that somebody as a Juice World or a Little Wayne will be moving all that weight. But look what happened. And obviously the feds have been watching him doing that for a while for them to raid that plane. And again, like I said before, we put so much pressure on our, on our entertainers, especially the male rappers, to have a certain lifestyle, to have money and cash and cars. The music industry ain't paying like it was. This ain't the damn 90s. You know, it's all about streaming now. You're not getting those big advances anymore. So that money's not coming in like it was. So a lot of these people are doing things on the side. And this is basically reiterating what I said months ago about Juice World and Lil Wayne. Jam Master J, a world-renowned DJ, was a cocaine trafficker and got mixed in with some dope boys. He was moving big weight. Kilograms of cocaine? You know how much that is street value-wise? I ain't trying to go there and, you know, break shit down. But I'm just saying, when you raise from the hood, your ears perk up. Like, damn, I see through all... I, I, that story, just a little bit that they sprinkled in there, tells me everything I need to damn know. Okay? So the whole situation is nuts. I'm glad they caught his killers, but I'm not shocked at all by everything that they're saying that transpired. I knew it had to be somebody that he knew, and I had always suspected it had something to do with shady dealings. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Oh, hold up. Miss Ivy Black says, remember John Forte from the Fugees went to jail for moving major drugs? Thank you. Sure was. John Forte. You know, I like to swing it this way. However the hell his rhyme went. I remember him, though. Oh, he was moving big weight. They gave him, like, what, like 10, 15 years? A lot of people in the industry, they also dabble in moving drugs. And like I said, it didn't start with the black folks. We're not going to do that. Because a lot of times we like to demonize our own. These black artists didn't start this shit. Y'all better go back to the damn Rolling Stones. They don't call themselves the Rolling Stones for no reason. Rolling Stones, Elvis, Aerosmith, all them rock and roll boys was moving weight throughout the country. That's how drug was being trafficked. That's why everybody in the Midwest, the ones who smoke, no, no, can tell you everything about weed from Cali, but ain't never been to damn Cali. How do you think they how do you think they know about perp and all them different weed strains? Cause a lot of that shit is being moved in via those tour buses and those planes. Oh yeah, it didn't start. Yeah, Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. It didn't start with the black folks. You know, by the time we get involved in some shit, it's been going on for years. The rat pack, all them folks moving weight. Yep, cocaine cowboys, honey. 
So, like I said, I'm not shocked at all. I'm not shocked at all. Let's see here. Semi oh, she says Luke Perry, who played Dylan on 90210, it's not majorly known, but he supplied major weed. Wow. I'm not surprised. I know he died recently. He died like maybe like a year or so ago. Damn T, always on live when I'm at work. I would definitely leave a like and watch the playback. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks for coming through with the comment. Let's see here. Um, Gong, Gong Toroff says, hey, Auntie, please shout out my friend Kobe. We're both Aquariuses and love discussing your truth telling theories. Thank you for all you do. Thank you and shout out to your friend Kobe, honey. Thank you guys for the super chat and thanks for supporting my channel. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Lovely Red J93 says, Jay was never a part of Run DMC and never got royalties. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Ooh, I did not know that. So if he's not eating like the others, maybe that's why he was involved in the drug game. That says a lot. Thank you for that, T, because I didn't know how their payments were split up. So maybe it was another situation like Spinderella. She was the DJ for Salt and Pepper, but she damn sure she ain't getting paid like Salt and Pepper. That's very interesting. Um, B. Cun says Latoya Jackson said her, her ex-husband was moving drugs when she was touring with the mafia. Damn. I told y'all. I told y'all. And a lot of times with those private planes and stuff, they're not going to be checking them. Yeah, Luke Perry died. Am I wrong? He was the one who he died because I remember his daughter was like saying stuff. Yeah, look, am I wrong? Did Luke Perry not die? I thought he died. Somebody said they had a question mark. I believe he did die, Luke Perry, like a year or so ago. Or was that somebody else? Okay, he did die. Okay, I know I wasn't going crazy. Okay, yeah, he had a, okay. Bree said he had a stroke. Okay. I know he passed away. I was a big 90210 fan. And, you know, his character, Dylan, honey. Yeah, Dylan looked like he smoked all types of weed. So I could see him, you know, <laughs> selling weed. Because <laughs> his character was a bad boy. So love me some damn Dylan. But, yeah, um... I'm not surprised, but if he was not getting paid off the music, that makes a lot of sense why he was doing that on the side. You know, so it's crazy, but I'm glad that his killers were caught, you know, and that can bring some justice and some relief to his family because it's been such a long time. But yeah, a lot of these celebrities are, are involved in a lot of stuff. That's why, for me, Juice World's death was uh, the S word. He would have been facing so much time. That was a federal case right there. That's why he panicked and he swallowed all those pills. Because it would have been tied to him. And you notice, since his death, ain't nobody heard nothing about all that weed. Somebody put in the comments, how much weed was Juice World caught with? Because it was like 100 pounds or something like that. Somebody... Find that and put in the comments. Do you notice ever since everything went down, we ain't heard nothing else about that case. There were other people on the plane with him. No one has been charged. Isn't that interesting? 70 pounds, 74 pounds. Pounds. Do y'all hear that? 70 pounds. Somebody said 300 pounds. 70. Okay. Okay. It looks like everybody's saying 70 to 74 pounds. I don't understand why there's such a variation, but okay, between 70 and 74 pounds, right? Do you know how much that is in street value? I haven't heard anything else. Let me see. Somebody says there was a co-conspirator. They were the ones who tipped the FBI on him. The co-conspirator, the person who snitched, they probably got caught in a whole nother case, and that's why they told but since then, we haven't heard nothing else about that case. We haven't heard what happened to all that weed. Did it make it to its final destination? Who knows? That story went out the window really quickly. And everybody focused on his death while his death was sad. I was like, well, what, where's all that weed about to go? Who about to get that money? Can't find nothing on the story no more. It's almost like it didn't happen. People forget about that. That's a lot. That's a lot. So I don't know. No, it was 
The pilot, he saw the gun and reported it to the police. Um, 454 grams in a pound. It was about forty to sixty thousand dollars. Don't ask me how I know, Gina. <laughs> I see you, girl. <laughs> she said, "Don't ask me how I know." <laughs> yeah, so the whole thing is crazy. Yeah, I heard it was a pilot that snitched. So I don't, I don't know where this co-conspirator thing came from. I heard it was a pilot, and because I remember a lot of people were mad at the pilot, people were sending the pilot death threats. But like I said, y'all are mad at him. He's doing his job. He's not trying to get tied up in a fucking federal case because if they would have got searched and had the pilot not said anything, everybody in that plane, including him, would have been guilty. So that's probably why he told. Police probably smoked it up. Y'all are a mess. Let's see here. Um, LB says, hey, T, did you see the video of Meg? I Ooh! Did you see the video of Meg out in the club with one foot wrapped up having a grand old time? Didn't she get shot in both feet? And who heals that fast? Seems fishy. Love you. Damn, this tea is good. Honey, I saw a video of her with one foot bandaged. Then the next day, she had no foot bandaged. I don't know. I don't know. She's like Wolverine and she has, you know, regenerative healing powers. But I'm like, you got shot in both feet. It's a pretty quick recovery. But, you know, when you question anything, you know, you're, you're, you're mean, you're not supporting women. I don't know. The, the whole story just, you know, I, I don't know, honey. I, I don't know. Because I know, I know, of, I, we've known a lot of people in the hood who've been shot in different parts of the body. Getting shot ain't no joke. It's a long road to recovery. And honestly, if you were shot in both feet, you would have rolled out that car. You wouldn't have been limping. So I don't know. But again, when you ask questions, honey, people get mad. They'll, they'll you know, oh, you're mean. How dare you question anything? I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, I've I seen the video, sis. Or, or bro, I don't know. Your name was LJ, I think. Something just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Has anybody seen Tori? They try to lie and say that Tori got deported. I said, that motherfucker ain't deported. Tori's laying low. He's laying low. Somebody said, we want to see that hoof. You know what? Get out of my damn street. <laughs> Y'all are a mess. You know, like I said, I'm glad she's fine, you know, and everything's okay, but I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I don't know, honey. I seen the video. I was like, okay, interesting. You know, that's a lot of fast healing, so. <sighs> honey, let me move on to the next. Johanna. <laughs> Since 499, she says, summer is Again, strong and wrong. She said only feet babies, blended fresh fruit, no formula, only water because formula has toxins from the government. Okay, so that's what she was saying. Summer is very conscious. I, I noticed that she she has like this. I, I never knew about it till all her fans started hitting me up. She has like this secret backup page where she goes very esoterical and she follows me. And on this backup page, like, she'll post, like, clips from my videos. She'll post stuff from my Instagram. So she's been following me for a while. She's a very conscious girl. Uh, she goes very deep, very esoterical. Um, and, I, and, I, and I like Summer. She's more of an introvert. You know, I've gotten to know more about her from following the page. I don't understand how this page is a secret, but it has, like, 600,000 followers. Well, damn, it's not much of a secret because everybody's on here. But she posts a lot of stuff. I didn't see that particular post about, you know, what you should feed babies. Um, but I've heard a lot of stuff about, you know, things being in baby formula. And, you know, think about it. As human beings, there's no other... Other animals don't give other animals... Like, they don't feed their babies breast milk from other animals, right? So if, like, a lion... You know, I'm a Leo... If a lioness has a lion cub, she's not going to feed her baby zebra milk 
or elephant milk, right? We're the only species that instead of breastfeeding our babies, we give them milk from cows, right? And I mean, I'm not knocking anybody because some people can't make milk or, you know, their milk ducks dry up. So then they got to give their babies formula, you know? So um, I, I've heard good and bad, but if you can, I will say that if you can breastfeed your babies, breastfeed them. Breast is best, okay? I know breasts look good in shirts, okay? I know y'all like to, you know, fill on them and squeeze them and shit, but that's not why they're here, okay? The main reason for having breasts is to feed the babies, so feed the babies breast milk whenever possible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Breast is best. If I can leave y'all with anything. Fruit is cool. Water is cool. But breast is best. <laughs> and them damn babies will suck you dry, honey. Oh, my gosh. They will suck you dry. By the time my, my son was like four months old, I couldn't even make breast milk. I'm like, that sucks my shit dry. They had to give me like, it's called Fungu Geek. It's like this, it's like a, a tea. Had to drink that to help produce more breast milk. They were sucking me dry. You know, so yeah, whenever you can, don't just feed your kids fruit and water. They need nutrients. You know, and if you can't breastfeed your kids, this is not to knock you. Because I know for some women it's very hard, you know, but if you can do it. Yeah, yep, uh, fungu keek. I, I might have pronounced it wrong, but they spelled it correctly in the chat. That helps to produce breast milk if you start running low. You drink fungu geek tea, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it works. You know what I'm saying? When I had my youngest, I started getting low on breast milk. They had me drinking the fungu geek tea. Next time I woke up, my titties was, like, swollen, full of milk. I was like, oh, shit, bring me the baby. <laughs> it worked. The milk is back. <laughs> so for ladies who are pregnant or, you know, about to have a baby, Fungu Geek. <laughs> if you can take anything away from my, from my stream, that helps to produce more breast milk. So help me, because it was running low. I was crying and shit. I'm not going to be able to feed my baby. I'm going to have to get the baby Simulac. And they're like, no, drink this tea and you should, you know, it should start, you know, producing more. And it did. It did. Shit. Titties was heavy as hell. Well, there was five pounds a piece. Bring me that baby so he can eat. <laughs> yeah, I know I butchered the name, honey. But y'all yeah, spelled it correctly in the chat. So for people who need it, just Google it. It'll help. So, yeah, to me, breast is best. You know what I'm saying? If you can breastfeed, breastfeed as long as you can. Now, I don't want to see nobody talking about they breastfeeding their child. Their child is three and four. That's a bit creepy to me. Like, I get it, but I'm sorry. If, if, you, if your child can pull up your shirt, unhook your bra, lift your titty up and put it in its mouth, the child is too damn old to be breastfed. That, I just don't like that. I don't like when a four-year-old can just come and be able to just pull your titty out and start sucking on it. That's a bit much, okay? At that point, get a pump, pump it into a cup, and have them drink it from a cup. You wouldn't allow your four-year-old to go and just suck the udder's teat, a, a cow's teat, okay? Just because they can do it. You would put the milk in a cup. Same with breast milk. I, just, I, don't, I don't like when I see, you know... On Instagram, three and four year olds, you know, just sucking on their mom's titty. Like, what? What? what, what, what? Give them a cup. <laughs> I think that's a bit much. Anything over the age of one and a half, two, like I said, they can unhook your bra strap, <laughs> pull your titty out and help themselves. That's a bit too much. <laughs> At that point, they need a damn sippy cup, okay? Not knocking nobody. If you want to, you know, give your child breast milk till they're four and five, that is your business. But I just feel like at that age, they don't need to be sucking on it. I think that's a bit much. Once they have teeth, you know, teeth hurt. Once they have teeth, they don't need to be sucking on the teeth. <laughs> How the fuck did we get on this topic? Look like, who, who sent this super chat? Where did, <laughs> where did this topic come from? I'm right. Them teeth hurt. I'm like, oh, uh, once they get, you know, that, that those those four teeth. Okay, we done. You're going to be getting all this breast milk from a sippy cup. 
Imagine having rolls back here. No, hell no. Ain't no way in hell you sucking on anything past the age of one and a half. Sit your ass down. <laughs> oh, my God. I was, hold up. JY says the Bible says stop at two. I didn't know there was breastfeeding things in the Bible. Look, you learn something new every day. So the Bible even says stop breastfeeding your kids at the age of two. I didn't know that. I, I've never seen that. Pa what passage is it? Because y'all would just pull stuff out the Bible. We need a passage. <laughs> I've never heard of that. That is so funny. Let me see. I think I basically hit on everything. Um, this was a good stream, despite the fact. Uh, the mess from YouTube. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I think we hit on all the topics. We did, we did. Oh, okay, there's one more thing we can hit on real quick before I leave. So there's a new show. It's on OWN. It's called Black Love, right? And it's supposed to be all these black couples. Basically, they're showing black people in a good light. Like, oh, you know, I'm married to a black woman. I'm married to a black man. We're in love. Yay. Well, now there's a lot of people who are upset because they feel like the show is colorist. And you got folks complaining on Twitter, and they're saying that um, all the couples have light-skinned women, and it's bothering people. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's like, you just, yeah, okay, somebody said it's not new. I've never watched this show. Somebody said it's a documentary to trigger black people. It's an old show. Yeah, I've never watched it. All I know is that they're on Twitter complaining about it. Um... Let me just show y'all a snippet of it. I'm not into all these love shows because like I told y'all, I know y'all probably like, this all bitter bitch. No, I'm not bitter at all. I'm just not into couple shows because people show you what they want to show you. Just like what we talked about at the beginning of the stream. Oh, LaToya and her husband were goals. Now they don't unfollowed each other on social media and he's a, you know being accused of cheating. Portia and Dennis were goals. Now they don't unfollow each other. I just, I don't get involved in people's relationships like that to make them my couple goals. I, I just don't care. But um, let me show y'all this clip really quick before I go. People are like mad about this. Uh, I guess. Y'all right, go ahead and check this out. Me and my ghetto Twitter. <laughs> browser not <laughs> old ass browser. From the moment that we kissed, it was over. I, I, I would have said yes that day. You, are you listen to a song and you know you like it in the first bar. That's what I felt like. I just said, I'm going to go for it. It's love. The minute we got married, things changed astronomically. Not at all how I thought that this. Okay, I don't want to play too much. They got music and shit going on in the background. You're not about to pull my stream down. You know, Oprah be tripping. She don't like y'all using anything from her network, music. So y'all get the gist of it. So this is what some people are saying. Um, I'm like, people are like really upset. It's, let me pull this back up here. So I can show y'all pictures. Give me just a second. Okay. So these are the couples here that are featured. And I guess all the women are light-skinned, right? Or racially ambiguous. And so people are saying, you know, I find it strange that it's called black love, but all the women are light-skinned. Hopefully it's just a coincidence. Um, somebody here posted this. And they said, Dr. Sandy Darity and Dr. Alex Hamilton did a study, Google it yourself, linking colorism and black marriages years ago. In black society, it's time to stop the denial. There's an article that with stats on black women based on skin tone and marriages. Light skinned women, 55% are married. Medium skin shade, 30% are married. Dark skinned women, only 23% are married. Black love is literally based on colorism. And so, um, and then even on Twitter, there are things here saying like, the show is reflecting reality. It's those preferences that are creating a collection of couples that that the show gets to pick from. Black men's colorism towards dark-skinned black women is an issue, but the show must work harder to find couples that buck this trend. So let me go ahead and come back on the screen. 
So this is my issue with this, okay? Like, I mean, like, I get it, but after a while, it's just like, we complain so much. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can see, okay, mixed people, because I don't, I consider mixed people mixed. I've always said that, you know, some mixed people get mad. It makes me no difference. I consider mixed people what they are, which is biracial, right? Most of these women that I see on there, I'm assuming are just light skinned. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Are light skinned people not black or am I wrong? So that's the part I just don't understand. Like if like it's it's almost like we say we want black love and then they show black love and then we're upset because these black men have lighter skinned wives. I agree that maybe they should show more diversity, you know, show a dark skinned couple or show a dark skinned woman with a light skinned man. You know what I'm saying? Like like show different types. But it's just it's just weird. It's like just a, it's constantly complaining and it's constantly, you know, it's just constant complaining over skin tone. It it just gets to the point where I just I, I just tune out from the conversation because it's just like it's always people just being mad about everything. And my thing is is this. Even if these men who have chosen these light skinned women to be their wives, even if they're not with these particular women, does that mean that they're going to be with you? No. You know, it's just, it's like, just because you try, you can't shame somebody out of a situation. People are going to be with who they want to be with. And that's the part that's just like, they're showing happy couples. They're trying to inspire the community you know what I'm saying, into marriage and love. And now we're complaining that, well, there's no dark-skinned women. Well, maybe there'll be another season where they can have a dark-skinned wife. You know, it's just, I don't know. It's just like a constant, constant complaining. I just, I don't get it at this point. It's very frustrating. Um, let me see. Leslie says, yes, yes, T, I'm sick of folks complaining about everything. Um... Beauty Pageant's Diary sent 199 says, you are amazing. Thank you so much, sis. Um, just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. Exactly. Thank you, girl, Emo. She says, um, let me see here. There were darker skinned women in the previous episodes of the show. Okay, thank you, Angel Face. See, like I said, I did, I've never watched this show. I just only know about the controversy that's brewing on Twitter. You know, and it's just starting to be a bit much you know, with people, um, it's frustrating. And that's the part, part I hate because it seems like dark skinned women complain about everything when that's not the case for the most part, a lot of dark skinned women, we're out here doing us and living our best damn lives. But it seems like it's just always a complaining and it's always coming from like this sector. And it's getting to the point now where you keep complaining about everything it's like the boy that cries wolf. People are just going to tune you out and they're not going to care about real issues. You know, let, I, I'd rather hear people really go in when there's real issues of colorism. We can't say that we want to see black men married to black women, but then say, well, you don't make the shade range. I don't think that's fair. Because I, I, I can tell you now, if this, was, if this were dark skinned women and their husbands were light skinned, you'd hear nothing. You would hear absolutely nothing. And that's keeping it a buck. If these were dark skinned women and they were dating Italian men or white men, you'd hear nothing. It'd be, oh my God, dark skinned women are, are, are exploring their options. Yup, date who wants you. We can't have it both ways. We have we can't have it both ways. Okay, good. Kay says I'm not capping for Yeah, let, let's get that clear. Y'all always. Be trying to say, you don't need to cape for the light skin. I'm not caping for nobody. Common sense is common sense. And I hate the fact that as a dark skinned woman, when I speak truth, I'm caping for light skinned girls. They don't need me to cape for them. Shit, they're good in society. If anything, they need to cape for my black ass. I, it, it's just like just common sense. If we're going to say that black people are black people, then we, we can't then in the same breath and turn around and say that somebody who is full black, who just happens to be lighter skin, they're not black enough. They're not a good representation of black women who are married. Very strange. Very strange. 
But let me go ahead and read these comments. Um, Nicholas Armstrong says, if they show a range of shades of black couples, this wouldn't be an issue with something like this. It can be discouraging to some people. Not me. I got confidence. Definitely agree. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, I can get where it can be discouraging. But again, let's speak real. Just because somebody is dating a lighter skin or racially ambiguous woman, even if they were to break up with that woman today, does that mean that they're automatically going to be dating me? No, it doesn't. So what is the point of complaining and, and getting upset and getting in your feelings? People like be so mad, like, okay, Chris Brown, we know he don't date nothing black, okay? Every, like his, his basic preference is light skin, Rihanna, complexion, or Asian. That's all I've ever, or black and Asian, whatever you want to call his girlfriend, baby's mother. That's been his preference. If Chris Brown stopped dating women who look like Karuchi tomorrow, does that mean he's going to run and go get with a dark-skinned woman? No. So why waste your energy being upset and being bothered by that? I hope that with all this complaining, because somebody was saying that they were dark-skinned women in previous episodes, hopefully Owen will mix it up more. But we can't keep complaining about stuff when it comes to stuff like that. Like, this is supposed to be something positive, showing black love. But now we're trying to say that it's not black love because these women are too light. I, if I was one of those women, I'd be offended. I, I would be offended if somebody would t to tell me that my love is not good enough because of my skin tone. Because, again, if these were dark-skinned couples... And people were saying that, like, who wants to see these couples? All these couples are dark-skinned. Everybody ain't dark-skinned. I don't want to see this. Where's the light-skinned couples? Oh, could you imagine the outrage? Let's keep that real. Could you imagine the outrage if the color was on the other shoe? <laughs> it was on the other foot. I said the other shoe. If we switch the skin tones, the outrage would be crazy. Um... Oh, oh, cute. I'm just Reese. I'm gaslighting. That's what y'all say. Y'all love to say that I'm gaslighting when I'm speaking the truth. So if I'm gas, if I'm gaslighting, you can leave. You don't got to watch me. It's not gaslighting. It's common sense. Again, it's women like you who just love to complain about shit. But again, you have no solutions besides complaining and saying that somebody's gaslighting. I love when y'all say that gaslighting, caping. No, the truth is the truth. The truth is, let's stop complaining. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and let's start supporting each other. The colorism shit is getting old, period. Now, when there's real colorism, damn right you're supposed to call it out. When you have male hip-hop you know, rappers disrespecting dark-skinned women, I have no problem dragging their ass and calling that out. Because don't forget, I've been talking about colorism before there was ever a check to be had. So miss me with the gaslighting bullshit. What it is is you're comfortable in your victimhood. And I'm nobody's victim. And I'm not going to let nobody make me feel like I'm less than because I'm dark-skinned. Period. So y'all yeah, love to say stuff like that, but it's all good. Um, let me read these super chats. Princess Vivi says, hey, Auntie, I love seeing you on my screen. You are amazing. Thank you so much, sis, and thanks for coming through. Um, sorry, love, since $9.99. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Jack, uh, Jack DiCaprio says, it's just that for promotion, dark-skinned women don't have enough promotion as desirable. It would help girls be seen as desirable. And I get that. I understand that. I understand the promoting. But again, it's also as dark-skinned women, we also have to hold ourselves accountable. What have I always told you guys? When it comes to your support, your likes, who you follow, we are responsible for that. If y'all don't want to see these so-called light-skinned girls and racially ambiguous girls be promoted in the way they are, then those should not be the only type of women that you follow. I never really see, like, you know, dark-skinned girls having the same amount of followers. I'm talking about ones that are, like, bad as hell, beautiful. They never have the same amount of followers or support as, like, an Amber Rose or a Black China. So a lot of that is also on us. 
We can't just complain all the time. We also have to put action towards that. I follow a group on um, Instagram called Dark Skin Women. And I love seeing their posts. When they post girls, I hit like. But a lot of times, you might see on some pictures maybe a thousand likes. But then, and they don't post any light skin girls. They just post dark skin women. But then, like, you go to places like the Shade Room, they post light skin models, 50,000 likes. Post a dark skin model, maybe 10,000 likes. So a lot of that stuff are issues that we have within ourselves that we have to address. So until we start supporting these women, just complaining about it 24-7 is not going to change anything. You have to put support behind these couples. Why are dark-skinned couples not couple goals? I only see people really saying, like, the couple girls are always, like we said, the, the black guy and the racially ambiguous. They're couple girls. They're couple goals, excuse me. You don't see too many brown-skinned couples being praised or uplifted as couple goals. So those are just some real conversations that we have to have besides just being mad at own and being mad at light-skinned people and light-skinned girls and light-skinned guys and things like that. I think there needs to be more positive representation, but when there is, are we supporting it? That's the question. Um, let's see here. Deanna Spiral says, you are preaching, raising a darker, complected daughter, and I want her to love herself. Amen. Amen. And that's what it's about. That, that love has to come from you as a parent, not social media. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't understand. Everybody wants to get upset about, you know, certain things. But what are you teaching your daughters, especially your dark-skinned daughters? That love has to come from the household, from the mother. You have to be told that you're worthy, that you are somebody. You shouldn't have to look to own to validate you. That, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, Melissa Lewis says, if you are black, then accept all shades of black. Don't be so quick to complain. We don't need the media to know. Hold on. We don't need media to know that we're awesome. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Patrick Bautista says, it's, it's called devil's advocate. I'm not gaslighting. And that necessary to have real conversations and find solutions. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah. And then KB sent a nine, nine, 1999 sticker says, you are amazing. Thank you so much, KB. So like I said, you know, at the end of the day, I feel like, you know, hopefully own, you know, we'll mix it up a bit and celebrate all relationships. But I just feel like, you know, the, the constant complaining takes away from real colorism issues. There is real colorism out there, and, and we cannot deny that. There are people who are denied jobs, who are denied certain opportunities because of not only their skin color, but their features and things like that. But when you just start, you know, just grasping for straws at everything, then after a while, people just start to tune it out. And they start to get tired of the whole colorism thing as opposed to taking it seriously and trying to be an advocate and an ally. Um, Irie says, for all black girls and women, you are loved. Thank you, T, for the inspiration. I am also following that page on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, Aikiki L8 says, from Chiquita P, glad to catch a live. This colorism is pathetic. Um, Asma in the uh, in the comment section says, colorism will never go away. Um, Light-skinned men say they face colorism in Hollywood because Hollywood prefers darker or brown-skinned uh, brown men like Denzel. I agree. You know, like I said, it's it's just been so ingrained in us as a community. And it's sad. You know, we, we have it on both ends. Like I spoke about a few weeks ago, all the mess that the rapper Logic goes through because he's very racially ambiguous. And so they always try to, especially like Joe Budden, always disrespecting him and, you know, saying that he he's not good enough, his raps aren't good enough, simply based on his features. But put those same features on a woman, it's nothing but praises. 
you know, so and th- and that's the sad part. It's like colorism definitely goes both ways, you know. And I just hope that eventually we get to a point where we can we can see beauty in all shades, from the darkest of the dark to the lightest of the light. But I also feel like we need to have an honest dialogue about not putting everything in the black category. Because that just causes even more chaos. <laughs> you already have enough issues with just light skin, you know, dark skin. And then you want to say that, you know, anybody mixed or racially ambiguous is also black. That's a whole nother can of worms. So I just hope one day we just get to the point where it's not going to be a big deal anymore when we see a beautiful dark skin woman as a main love interest. It's not going to, you know, be like, oh, my God, finally a dark skin woman because it's just the norm. I hope that we eventually get to that place. I really do. Let's see here. Wesley Snipes does not like black women. Shit. We can name a, a few guys in Hollywood. Let's see here. We have to be the change that we wish to see. We can make our own way instead of counting on white networks to include us. We got black we got this. Black comes in many different shades. Yes, and that was the cool thing I think about. Um, I don't know who's Ryan Destiny dating. Ryan Destiny and her boyfriend or couple goals. I don't know who she's dating. I haven't really. I love Ryan Destiny. I think she's beautiful, gorgeous girl. But and I think that was like the good thing about shows like Moesha back in the day, and now we see the reboot on Netflix, and I love that because it was just a wide range of skin tones, a wide range of black people. And we don't see that as much. And I think we need to get back to that. So that way, everybody just feels inclusive. Keith Powers. Oh, okay. I didn't know she was dating Keith Powers. He's handsome. Very handsome. Oh, my God. I just caught a second live. I love you. All the way from Switzerland. That's what's up. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, so I've been on here for an hour and 41 minutes. This ended up being a really good stream. I'm glad we got a chance to talk about it. Um, yes, Jasmine, she said the 90s had a huge variety of skin tones in music and in shows. It really did. And then at some point, it went left. And even now in music videos, you don't even see black women like that. Most of the women in hip-hop videos nowadays are straight white women, Asians, Indians, you know, so when from it being all like go back and watch the Rex and Effects video. All I wanna do is zoom a zoom 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 and a boom boom. Just shake your rum. Hey, rum shaker. Go and watch that video. One, the girls were more natural. It was real asses, real tits. But look at the complexions. Look how they had, you know, just regular black women in that video. And then look at the hip hop videos of today. I wish we would get back to that point where everybody just had representation in the black community. Now, when you watch these videos, it's like, dang, I didn't know, you know, like, were Asian women a part of hip hop? You know what I mean? When all this stuff started. But now they're one of the main ones casted in hip hop videos. So, again, the responsibility is on us. Because those artists have the final say on who goes in their music video. When I was in Iggy's video, Iggy Azalea's video a few years ago, and me and her were chopping up and having a conversation, she told me specifically, I picked you because I love your skin tone. I love your natural hair. Your hair is just so beautiful to me, and I wanted to have that in my video. This was a white woman telling me that. So if this white woman had enough gumption to say, I want a beautiful, you know, dark-skinned black woman with natural hair in my video... Why can't black artists do the same? So I don't want to hear all that shit that, you know, it's the management and, you know, it's Hollywood. The, the artists have the final say of everybody who they pick to be in their videos. So on that note, y'all, I'm out. Yeah, congrats to Izzy. Uh, uh, Izzy uh, I said Izzy. Iggy. Um, she had a little boy. Haven't seen the baby yet, but it looks like she's getting ready to drop some new music. So I like Iggy. Always been a really sweet girl. So, let's see here. Let me go ahead and get up out of here. 
I don't want this to run any longer. I think somebody just, okay, I got that super chat. All right, you guys. So thank you guys once again for joining me today. I will be back in a few days with another live stream. I appreciate the conversation and the dialogue. So I will see you guys later. And I'll, I'll go ahead and re-upload this live in the event the live from YouTube is like cut and choppy and all that stuff. I'll re-upload this in full. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good evening.